Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. This video is going to be just a real quickie video. Um, I received a question on my Instagram. Um, so yesterday, you know how you can put those little question thingies, that little box on your Instagram stories? So I did that. And one of the specific questions I got was actually one that I felt was worthy of a video. Gonna try to keep this video under 10 minutes so that I could post this also on my Instagram TV channel. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. So the question is, um, is I wanna learn tarot, how, but my husband thinks that it's bad or it's evil or he's not, you know, he's just not warmed up to the idea. Um, how can I show him that it's not wrong? So I really liked that question because it's something that I can relate to. Um, it's something that I went through. Um, and I'm sure many of you guys have gone through or are going through that with your significant others. So this is just merely my opinion. Um, whatever I say is not the all end all be all. Um, this is just my opinion. This is based on my experience. Um, so first off, anything that we are not familiar with, um, anything that we don't have much knowledge of, it's easy to put assumptions onto, right? Um, it's easy to assume things are, are, are negative or evil about it. It's easy to assume that it's wrong. It's easy to assume that it's not the right thing to do, that it's, you know, we, 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 we latch on to the stereotypes and tarot, this amazing little deck, okay, has so many negative stereotypes to it based on lies, based on assumptions, based on people who are not familiar with the concept of it, um, based on Hollywood movies and TV shows. Um, <clears throat> and so it's kind of, it's, it has this reputation to it. And people who are not familiar with the cards or who do not really understand what the cards are, are for or how you work with them or the many different ways to work with them will automatically think of the, the whole majority um, opinion of it's an evil, taboo, blah, 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 blah. So breaking that, um, the first thing I would say is have your own knowledge of the cards. If you have already gone through, you have investigated, you read up on it a little bit, maybe you, you own a deck, you pick up a deck for yourself and you're starting to learn, you're watching videos on it. When you are comfortable with the concept of what you're doing with the tarot, you will feel 100 times more comfortable introducing it to a loved one or a friend or a significant other, okay? You will be able to answer their questions with so much confidence that it's going to kind of add a little spark to them. It's going to create this realization that, hey, maybe this isn't so bad after all. If you were to try to introduce this lovely deck <laughs> to your significant other friend or whoever um, with little to no knowledge of it, um, and they ask you questions about it and you don't even know how to answer, of course they're gonna look at you like, nope, you don't know what you're talking about, I'm gonna stick to my guns and this is what I believe. Um, so, filling yourself with your own knowledge of the cards is 100%, I feel a really good first step. So get yourself a deck, get yourself a deck to play with. You do not need anyone's permission to, to own a deck, um, unless of course you're like under 18 and you know, you have, you know, you, you got to ask parent, your parents permission because you don't have your own source of money, then that's different. But if you're a full blown adult, you have your own income and whatnot, purchase yourself a deck, you know, you don't have to announce it to the world. Hey everybody, I'm buying a tarot deck. <laughs> get yourself a deck, get yourself a guidebook. Um, there's many books that they sell at Barnes and Noble. There's, um, sometimes the decks themselves will come with a guidebook, um, and start becoming familiar with it yourself, you know, learn, read about it, um, become comfortable with it. And then the next thing I say is get rid of those stereotypical assumptions of how people use the tarot. Um, people assume that tarot is used for fortune telling devices or it's used to tell when people are gonna die or how much money you're gonna, whatever, you know? It's, it can, I mean, it depends on the reader. And that's the next thing I wanna say is, 
the way you choose to read your cards is how your cards are going to be treated and the energies that they're going to release out, right? And if you're going to be a kind of reader that is solely doing fortune telling or is solely reading for the dark arts, you know, like the dark, like negative spirits and like conjuring demons. I mean, like who, who would want to do that? But I'm just saying, I'm just saying that. If you choose to use the cards for that purpose, that's the energy that you're inviting into the, the tools. They're, they are tools. You are the person utilizing the tool. So if you're gonna be bringing in and welcoming that type of energy, then of course the cards are gonna relay some, some something a little bit more negative or more dark, right? But there's so many different types of readers. And I feel like once you get familiar with that, you can kind of identify who, what kind of a reader am I gonna become. So like I said, there's fortune telling readers. There are readers who do this merely for their own personal benefit. This is a, like a therapeutic tool for themselves. There are spiritual readers. There are energy readers. There are um, pet readers. <laughs> there are um, readers who like to solely focus only on love and relationships. Some people like to focus only on the career readings. Some people, some readers are into everything. Like I feel like I'm the kind of reader that I'm, I'm like kind of an everything reader, but I do have my favorites. I do enjoy love readings and I do enjoy energy readings. Um, so, you know, everyone's going to do it in a different source, in a different way. And so once you identify what kind of readings you feel comfortable with, and I always believe that when you're first learning the tarot, utilizing it for your own personal self discovery and you're learning for yourself, use you, you are your own guinea pig, then you can venture out and try other different things. Um, and I just feel like a little bit of knowledge, a, a lot of confidence, um, and just start kind of becoming comfortable with the tool that you were using creates this atmosphere that is more welcoming, that is more um, convincing to people who maybe don't understand what this all is all about, right? Especially people who look at this as taboo or people who just, who don't even know what a tarot deck is. There's some people who just don't understand it at all. Um, and so you also, and then I guess like to wrap this video up overall, your significant other is going to have interests that maybe you don't understand, right? Or maybe that you don't like, or you guys are not gonna be always on the same page about everything. We are human beings, we have different opinions, we have different belief systems, we have different um, interests. So your significant other may be into stuff that you're not into. And that's kind of part of the relationship as you know, we come together with our differences, we become one unit. Um, but we also still need to embrace our own individuality in our relationships. And I feel like that's what creates a healthy, positive relationship with your significant other is that you guys can compromise um that you guys can start to understand each other's differences so and so is into this so and so is into that i don't want to be a part of that they don't want to be a part of this but we still have our own individual lifestyles and our own individual makeup within the relationship right so your significant other may warm up to this fact okay um, and I hope that they do because it's an amazing feeling when my husband started to warm up to it. Um, but if they don't, they should at least respect your choice to practice something that you feel confident and comfortable with. If you are comfortable with the cards and you're confident about it and you're interested and you want to do more with it, they should at least honor that right? You're not doing anything negative. You're not doing anything to harm yourself or others. So that there should be a, a sense of respect. Um, and then I feel like with time and with you, like continuing on your, like your quest to read the cards, eventually they're going to start asking questions. They're going to come around and before you know it, they're going to ask you for a reading. And then that's all, it, that's all it takes. <laughs> Cause after that point, they're, they're going to be completely in and wanting to know more about it because that's what happened with my husband. So I hope this answered your question, my love. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Send me a DM. Um, but do your thing. Get yourself a deck. Start learning. Feel, fuel yourself with knowledge. And then, you know, subtly start to introduce it and accept. If they don't accept it, maybe in time they will. Okay? Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye.